Welcome back, everybody, to the GSMC Hoops and Heels Women's Sports Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. We're just going to talk about some MA updates, and now we're going to talk about the most stacked basketball Olympic roster in past Olympics. So in this segment, um, just to make this clear, I'm going to talk about what Olympic roster I thought was the most stacked. Now, before I begin, I want to say that this year's Olympic roster seems to be the most stacked, and this is definitely my favorite roster yet. I think the teams just keep getting better and better, which is absolutely amazing for the WNBA and the U.S. and the Olympics. But I wanted to focus on a roster from previous Olympics, since I have already talked about this year's Olympic roster, and we don't have any results from any games or anything, because the games actually haven't even started. So yeah. So in my opinion, I think the most stacked roster in the USA Olympic basketball history was the, drumroll please, no, I'm just joking, was the 2020 Tokyo Olympic roster. Let's unpack the stock, the stacked roster, because I hands down think this was the most stacked roster, uh, like excluding the roster from this year right now. So first we have to mention that Asia Wilson was on this roster. Standing at six foot four, Asia Wilson combines her height with exceptional athleticism this physical advantage allows her to dominate both offensively and defensively. Wilson is known for her versatility on the court. She can play the power forward and center positions effectively and has a diverse scoring repertoire, including post moves, mid-range jump shots, and the ability to drive to the basket. Her footwork and agility make her a difficult matchup and defenders. Now, in the 2020 Olympic Games, Wilson averaged 16.5 points and 7.5 rebounds per game during the Olympics, leading the team in scoring. Her consistent performances helped Team USA secure that gold medal, continue the country's dominance in women's basketball. Brianna Stewart was also on the team, and she always is leading in the WNBA. She's got that height and agility that makes her a dominant force on the court. She also is a versatile player, playing both forward and center. Her ability to shoot from long range, drive to the basket, and post up makes her a versatile offensive threat. Stewart has a reliable jump shot, both from mid-range and beyond the arc. Her shooting from and her shooting form and wherever she's from and her consistency within that make her a significant scoring threat. I also need to mention her rebounding skills. She is an excellent defender capable of guarding multiple positions. Her shot blocking ability and rebounding skills are crucial to her team's defensive success. And in the 2020 game, she averaged 15 points, 10 rebounds, and 4.2 assists per game. Next on the team was Jewel Lloyd. Her athleticism sets her apart and makes her a standout player in the league. Her ability to play both guard position effectively makes her a valuable asset. She has a quick first step, excellent speed and agility, which allows her to create space and drive to the basket. Also, you got to remember how she's a prolific scorer. In the game, she averaged 4.8 points and 2.5 assists, which was really good considering the amount of playing time she had. The iconic Brittany Griner was another member of the team. Standing at 6 feet 9 inches, Brittany Griner's height gives her a significant like natural advantage in both offense and defense. Her athleticism, agility, and mobility complement her height, making her a dominant presence in the paint. Griner is renowned for her shot blocking agility ability. She holds the NCAA record for career blocks and has consistently been among the top shot blockers in the WNBA. Her timing, reach, and instincts make her a formidable rim protector. Griner has a versatile offensive game. She can score efficiently in the post with her back to the basket and has a reliable mid-range jump shot. Her ability to dunk a rarity in women's basketball <laughs> adds an extra dimension to her scoring threat. Moreover, Griner's high in positioning skills make her an excellent rebounder. She is adept at scoring both, securing both offensive and defensive rebounds, giving her team additional scoring opportunities and preventing second chance points for opponents. She averaged 16.5 points, 7.2 rebounds, and 1.2 assists in the games. The iconic Aces player Chelsea Gray was also on the team. Gray's superior ball handling skills allow her to navigate through defensive smoothly. She can create her own shot off the dribble and break down defenders with ease, which is crucial for point guard. Gray is a proficient shooter, particularly in clutch situations. She has a reliable mid-range jumper and three-point shot, which forces defenses to respect her scoring ability from all areas of the court. During the games, Gray averaged 7.3 points, 1.7 rebounds, and 3.2 assists. Next on the team was Sylvia Fowles. She is renowned for her physical dominance in the paint. Fowles is an exceptional defender, earning multiple WNBA Defensive Player of the Year awards. Her shot blocking ability and defensive IQ make her a formidable presence against opposing offenses. As a veteran, Fowles brought leadership and experience to the Olympic team, helping to guide younger players and maintain composure in high pressure situations. Her presence was a stability stabilizing. <laughs> That's what I meant to say, wow. Factor for Team USA, she averaged 5 points, 4.2 rebounds, and 0.5 assists. 
We also had Skylar Stiggin Smith on the team. She is known for her exceptional athleticism. Her speed, agility, and endurance allow her to excel in both offensive and defensive situations. She can, I'm sorry if you just heard me swallow. I hate when you can hear people swallow. So that's like my pet peeve. So I'm so sorry if you can hear me swallow right there. <laughs> I need a drink of water. Okay, so anyway, Dickens Smith can drive to the basket, create her own shot, and keep up with the fastest opponents. She's a versatile scorer who can shoot from long range, mid range, and drive to the basket, like I said. Her ability to score in various ways makes her a constant threat on the court. She averaged 1.6 points, 0.2 rebounds, and 0.4 assists in the Olympics. The last two people on the team were Sue Bird and Ariel Atkins. Sue Bird is renowned for her exceptional basketball intelligence. Her ability to read the game, anticipate opponents' moves, and make quick decisions sets her apart as one of the best point guards in the history of basketball. As a seasoned veteran, Bird's leadership on and off the court is invaluable. She commands respect from teammates and opponents alike, guiding her team with experience and composure. Bird, along with Diana Tarisi, served as co-captain for Team USA in the Tokyo 2020 Olympics. Her leadership was instrumental in carrying the team to success. She averaged 5.5 points, 2.5 rebounds, and 5.8 rebound, 5.8 assists in the game. Okay, I also want to say one thing that I noticed recently. So I've been obsessed with Love Island recently, and I know this is like not relevant, but I promise it is. Why does she low-key look like Connor? Like the bombshell Connor. Like why? Does she kind of look like him? Anyway, random thought. If you watch Love Island USA, I hope you understand that. But if you don't, that was an awkward comment. And just ignore that I said that. So moving on, Ariel Atkins is renowned for her exceptional defensive abilities. Her quickness, anticipation, ability to disrupt opponents plays makes her a standout defender in the WNBA. She often guards the best players on the opposing team and excels in one-on-one -on -one matchups. She is a proficient shooter, both from beyond the three-point line and mid-range. Her shooting accuracy and ability to score in various ways makes her a versatile offensive threat. Atkins averaged 1.8 points, 0.8 rebounds, and 0.2 assists. Lastly, we had one more player, but she didn't get the chance to play. We had Katie Lou Samuelson on the team. She's a player that excels both in guard and forward. She's got great scoring ability, and she's a good ball handler, but she actually did not play any minutes because she texted positive for COVID-19 just before the games. So that concludes our show for today. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to the GSMC Hoops and Heels Women's Sports Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. Your support means a lot to us, so please remember to subscribe to the show and leave a positive review. It really does make a difference. Also, please give some recommendations for topics if you guys are interested in hearing about certain things in women's sports. I'm totally down to talk about anything y'all are interested in. So we also invite you to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram for more content and updates, and all those will be linked in our description and our YouTube channel. Thank you guys once again, and have a wonderful day. Let's go. I wake up to a little bit of drool on my pillow, feel like it's gonna be a bad day. Yeah, I'm tired of shit, and the coffee ain't hit yet. Damn, ain't that great. I don't wanna go.